All right, it's the Terry Sullivan Show. Today's guests, part two, returning from Repeat Realty, Heath Wells and Zach Moore. You know it could always be worse, and it just did. Here's Terry Sullivan. <laughs> Do I throw you off because we decided to add another episode here? Yeah, well, By the, uh, I roll with it. I roll with it. Hey, break out into some. Uh, uh, break out into a tune over there. Play, just run up and down the neck of that guitar for a second. I want. I want to hear what's going on. That just cost you fifty dollars. That was. Uh, <laughs> invoice. Wait till you get my bill. <laughs> Wait until you get mine. <laughs> As I say, I get paid weekly. <laughs> well, very weekly. Very weekly. <laughs> he pays me well. Well, he pays me. Well, he pays me. <laughs> so here's the deal. <clears throat> we had uh, Zach and Heath on, and this is why we're wearing the same clothes. People are going to say, "Wait a minute." That's exactly the same clothes they were wearing last week. But we, we, we went through the interview so quickly and didn't get it. I had a lot more questions to ask, but, yeah. but it was so much fun. So what we decided to do is we decided to uh, do another episode, and I hope you, hope you enjoy it. Um, so here we go. So uh, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, Heath, is when I first opened here, or actually when I first started doing all you can eat ribs on Saturday night. You came in and you want we were breaking records back then and at the yeah. time the the record was 18. Right. So you came in and you said oh, I'll I'll do it. Well, I didn't know it. You forced me to do it <laughs> without me knowing it. Well, look, you're six what? Four, two, six, two. Six, two and you're, you know, 200 pounds. I said this guy can pack on some ribs. <laughs> but you when you got into it, Good heavens, you got into it. Well, I had people telling me, hey, this is a competition, and hyping me up. And next thing I would know, he would bring me another five. And I'm like, Terry, I just ate 15. <laughs> and it just kept going that way. Who was it that was with you? I think it was my wife. No, no, it was a... a no, it was, a, it was a, I think, Freddie. Friend of ours. Yeah, friend of ours. And he kept pushing you forward. He, yeah. He'll do that. 26 he was my hype man. And I, I, just, I was like, well, here we go. 26 ribs later. 26 ribs later. Now, to put that in perspective, that's a little more than two racks of that's ribs. A that's a lot. And then you, I didn't see you again for a month. No, I didn't eat for a month. <laughs> I didn't even sleep that night. You, next time you came in, you said, I couldn't look at ribs. I couldn't look at pork. Uh, I couldn't look at food for a while. No, but we took a picture together with a rack of ribs. And uh, Trey, remind me. I've got that uh, picture with Heath and a rack of ribs. Remind me to pull that up so we can add that to this. Yeah, we uh, need that. This yeah, we can <laughs> add that to his resume also. But I didn't keep the record very long. What was the no. new one? That very next week, we had a guy come in, 6'4", 280 pounds, and he ate 32. Golly. Holy smokes. Came in to break that record, and he ate 32. But he could have gone on. I mean, he was just, it, was, it came down to, uh, I was done with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it came down to, all you can eat to you means all I say you can eat. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen that guy since. I don't know. If he, <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. I haven't seen him since. So. Wow. But he came in and broke that the record. That was fun. That was, that was, right before, everything started kind of shifting. Yeah. Um, yes. That was a lot of fun. We that, had. Yeah. This place was packed. And, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were. Then we went right into co into uh, the COVID where they yeah. started shutting down the dining and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But we had a little fun before it started. We sure have had a lot of fun since it's been over. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some other things. I want to talk about the Old Town Sign Company. Now, you, you bought that. You guys are partners in mm -hmm. that, right? And you bought that uh, back in when? During COVID. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah. yeah. We were getting our signs made by uh, a company down the road, uh, Bradbury Signs, yeah. and yeah. Uh, went down there and to pick up a sign. And that's when they told us, hey, this is our, we'll be closing in about two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And we just, it kind of fell in our laps where, Conversations happened, said, what are y'all trying to do with it, wanting to sell? 
and he was talking on the last episode about being the idea guy. <clears throat> and I, I take blame for being the idea guy. So I go back to them, deep pockets, and say, do y'all want to <laughs> buy a uh, sign company? And that's kind of how it all yeah. happened. Then we rebranded because we wanted a more uh, you know, localized, our old town. You yeah. know? And yeah. so that's how we came up with the name Old Town Sign Company. Yeah, and you, you put my sign up. On yep. my building, yeah, and then you, did the the food truck? Did your big truck? The food truck, yeah. Which was yeah. that was one of our first projects. It was. Um, it our was great. Big rap projects. It was great. And, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Well, to this day, it's it, 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 it's a great rap. It's yeah. a great rap. But you you do great work down there. I mean, you still own the place, and mm -hmm. you still uh, produce signs. And yeah. uh, uh, Gabe is Gabe still with you? No, Gabe, we have two new um, hires that we have a brand new uh, graphic designer and then we have a gentleman that does our installs that's been in the sign industry for 20 plus years. And uh, yeah. it's they great keep, work. They, uh, they, they really take it as ownership themselves and they've, mm. they've done a really good job with that. So you do, uh, what all kinds of signs do you do? Uh, anything exterior signage, a lot of real estate signage. Um, car vehicle wraps decals every every time you see a vehicle go down the road that's free branding for them you yeah. know it's going to cost a minuscule branding on their vehicle than what it's going to cost them to get a a billboard yeah and yeah. so um it's a, it's marketing and yeah. it's 100 percent marketing you know whatever you have to sell you need to brand it and People are branding it with signs, so yeah. as long as they're going to continue to market and brand, we'll still be in business. I've always said that same thing with the food truck. With the uh, it's a it's a it's a rolling billboard. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you I couldn't I couldn't buy the type of uh, advertisement I get right from that uh, right. from that truck. Right, and it's a great rap. I mean, you do you guys do great business. Thank you. you. sure Thank do. You. Zach, where'd you meet your wife? Uh, so <clears throat> she's from San Antonio, and we met in Wichita Falls. We were going to school there, uh, and we were both cheer college cheerleaders. That's how I met her. What? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> you were both college cheerleaders? Hey, I knew it would uh, lead me to my wife, so that's why I took that route. And uh, and yeah, we I, I got a little scholarship up there at Midwestern State University to, to uh, you know, getting out of high school is confusing times, and uh, yeah. which path you're going to take. And yeah. I just listened to God, honestly. I don't know. I remember, you know, I think back now, you're looking at your kids, like, look at this, look at, look what I've built. Yeah. But it wasn't you at all. You just yeah. follow, you know, follow the path you were led. And um, Did you enjoy that? Did you I enjoy did. cheerleading? I mean, were you the yeah. guy that threw everybody up in the air? I was. Yeah. I got into it at high school. Louisville High School has a big program there with yeah. co-ed, and uh, it was it was fun. It really, uh, yeah. it changed my life. and. It led me to Mandy. Mm -hmm. She moved here, and yeah, the rest is history. Yeah. Mm. So college cheerleading. Yeah, we don't mention that very often. No, we mentioned it today. I yeah. know. I made that mistake. <laughs> so we we might we might explore that just a little bit. There's Heath, not a lot of photos you... out there yet left. <laughs> oh, we'll be looking them up. <laughs> Heath, where'd you meet your wife? I met her. I moved to Frisco. I actually tell the story all the time. I I didn't have any business moving to Frisco because everything I did was here. Yeah. My business was here. Everything. Yeah. Um, but it was just an opportunity to, to experience something else. I had a buddy uh, that was a little lone fireman, and he said, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm getting a place over here. Do you want to move in? I said, sure. I have nothing to hold me back. Uh, fast forward, my wife now was a neighbor of mine, and we ran into each other and became really good friends. And there was just a big group of us that were friends over there. And then fast forward a little bit more, and we haven't left each other's side. So I tell yeah. people, there's no reason for me to ever move there. But there was a reason. God had a reason. You yeah. know, uh, w obviously, when you find the right one, when you find that soulmate, it, it changes your life. Yeah. And and that was so evident with you. Yeah. And what's her name? Whitney. Whitney. I I remember the first time I saw you after you started dating Whitney, and you were different. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you've always been a, a you know a, a fun. A fun guy, great personality, a dynamic guy, but you were different. I mean, yeah. you had you had a smile and a look in your eye that I said, Ooh, "That girl's got him." Mm -hmm. She did. Yeah. Yeah. She, and by the way, your dad said if everything ever any anything ever happened, you'd be the one to go. Wouldn't he stay? They tell her that. They say if anything ever happens to you guys, we're sure are going to miss him. <laughs> you know. So. Yeah. yeah. Fit. Zach, who's the biggest influence in your life? Mm, gosh. Um. 
other than God. We, 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 I understand that. Yeah, well, I would, you know, my grandfather, who's passed several years ago, comes to mind first, um, and my dad, um, and my son, you know. He's only been around for 10 years, but he's influenced me greatly. So You know, your kids sometimes can say things that you, that I was struggling one time. This is years ago when, when my son, when Cole, my son was, uh, uh, he was like eight years old. And I was sitting on my couch reading my Bible, and he said something to me, and I won't tell you what he said, but it completely made the scripture that I was reading come to life. Mm. Sometimes yeah. God can use your kids mm -hmm. to get into your soul and uh, straighten things out a little bit if you're struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Sure can. Yeah. And they helped me with work too. Just the other day my phone rang and I didn't answer it. And my daughter said, you better answer that phone or you're going to get a three star review. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, she's right. You know? <laughs> she keeps me on my toes. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you raise your kids different than your dad raised you? Uh, or let me ask you this. What, yeah. <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, when you were growing up and you said, I ain't, I'm never going to do it that way, do you do it that way? I think you do, you do yeah. fall into that, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, technology's changed a lot, the way you parent, and we try to not fall into that trap, but that's changed things. But uh, a lot of it's the same, um, you know, with the exception of, I, I do remember my dad working all the time. And, but I also remember a lot of special moments with him, but <coughs> I just, I try to uh, not be leaving that memory with my kids, that 90% of their memories of me is, is gone at work. Mm -hmm. And, and he's it's advised hard. you to do that. I mean, yes, he because, has. because he was gone a lot when you were a kid, he's advised you stay, you know, t yeah. take time with your family. For sure. You know, take time with your family. Yeah. They go, they go so fast. He what's most influential person in your life? Say it, because I know it's there. Man, I have so many influential people that I can't just pick one. Because um, the men in my family, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, all those men were, are, are so you know, hardworking. Um, and then on the flip side, my, my grandparents, my grandmas, and my mom <clears throat> are such dynamic women too, taking mm. care of family mm. and hardworking as well, yeah. that they all kind of come together as that one, you know, influential yeah. person. Heath, your mother's a, 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 a special woman. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a better wife, mother, uh, person out there? I mean, she really is 100% all of those things. Yeah, no, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Um, and I've, she's a great <clears throat> example of when I was looking for, you know, what, what would a wife would look like. I, mm -hmm. I compared everybody to her, and, and some people think that's weird, but, um, and I found that. I yeah, found yeah. the one who's, who I knew would be a great wife, yeah. and then now yeah. a mother, that's just, yeah. it's unconditional, and you don't find that often. Let me ask you this, Heath. Have you made the mistake of saying to Whitney, my mother doesn't do it that way? No. <laughs> Did no. your mother say never say that? <laughs> never say that. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mother's chicken's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't ever say that. <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, let me ask you this. What, let's talk about failures, <clears throat> because it doesn't matter what it is, success does not come without failures. Right. And there's something about uh, going through failures that prepares you for success mm -hmm. and the persistency of living life and doing business and getting up and doing it again and getting knocked down, right. getting up and doing it again, and uh, finally finding that niche in your life. Right. Biggest failure in your life, Zach. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, Sides Heath. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I, I feel like there's a, a lot of, uh, looking back, it's all high, you know, hindsight, but I feel like there was a lot of wasted time, even though I try to smell the roses and remind, remind myself of my age and that there's still a lot of life left. But uh, there was a lot of time, years there where I, I didn't succeed in the way that I, sh I wish I would had. This, this could have happened a lot quicker. That's just a selfish failure that I feel. Um, we don't really see failure as a negative thing. Um, right. And I try to teach everyone that it's, 
you got to risk it to eat the biscuit. You know, you. We, Wait, you got to you got to what? You got to <laughs> risk it to eat the biscuit. <laughs> what biscuit? Butter or what? honey butter? That's just I've never heard of that, but I like it. Yeah. I like biscuits. Yeah, we I do we too. love biscuits <laughs> with gravy. And, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, listen, sausage gravy. <laughs> yes. So, right. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Biscuits and sausage gravy. Mm. Terry, I'm going to need you to go get me some of that. But, yeah. Uh, Pick yeah. It up. Thanks, for, thanks for joining in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but, that, but listen, that, that's, that is so true. I mean, it's a funny phrase. You've got to risk it to eat the biscuit. But that is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. it comes to business, you've got to spend the money to make the money. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to spend the money and lose the money to mm -hmm. make the money. It all goes together. Yeah. But what's the one thing? If you could say to a young entrepreneur starting out and thinking about all those things, risk it to eat the biscuit, you got to spend it to make it, you got to lose it to make it. Sometimes you have to lose it all mm -hmm. to get it all. Right. right. Yeah. What's the one thing you would say to somebody starting out as an entrepreneur, got a little money to spend, mm -hmm. going on his own way or her own way, what would you tell I them? I would tell them to do what they love to do. I know that's so cliche, but we're all given talents, you know, God-given talents, we have to listen and try to, and you may not find that early on, but at some point you're going to realize, I'm really good at this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the past there was zero chance you could make a living out of certain things, but that's changed. I mean, yeah. you can you can literally do anything and make money doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I mean, my kids come to me with the craziest ideas. My son thinks he's going to be an NBA player, you know, when he... He's not going to be very tall. Um, <laughs> but there's some old boys that prove you don't have to be very tall. Well, that's, that's true. Too. That's true. Um, but so I don't think that's going to happen for him. But I do. Uh, Sorry to crush I, your dreams. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, yeah. good luck. I hope I eat these words one day. And he is. Uh, but and there's no bad ideas. If you're good at something and you truly have a true passion for it, you will you will love life making money doing that. But the thing is, is, is to find that thing that you were made to do. It's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. to find, and sometimes it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, yeah. it's, to try, it's to find and pursue that passion that right. you have, yeah. that you have. Yeah. I, I, somebody told me one time that if you ever find that thing that you were made to do, money will never be an issue. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. we believe it, you have to, not be distracted by all the distractions in life. and A lot of people don't want you to win, right? Yeah, that's right. for sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot, of, even a lot of times, a lot of people in your own circle, in your own family, right. they, yeah. they, they don't want you to win. So they try to hold you back and they give negative thoughts and try to push you down. Right. But you gotta move forward. You'll get yeah. a lot of no's before you get your first yes. There you go. And then you can feed off that first yes. Yeah. And it just builds from there. Yeah. It's a confidence builder, mm -hmm. isn't it? I, I tell you, you can't say enough about uh, how important building your confidence is yes. to make it in this world. Yeah. 100%. What would you say, uh, Heath, to somebody starting out? What, what's a, a one-liner that maybe would change the course of that person? Don't be afraid to, for the hard work and hard times. Because if you're not afraid of that, yeah. You can go hustle all, I mean, and, and be able to make that success. Yeah, yeah. Those that are, you're talking about confidence. Those that don't, that don't have that confidence to go talk to people and build relationships. That's all it is, building relationships. Mm. You yeah. know, you know somebody here that would know somebody there. And that is all it is. It's all about relationships, yeah. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't care what business you're in. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all about relationships, mm -hmm. yeah, and building those relationships and building them in an honest, in, a, in an honest way. Yeah. You know, not in a selfish way, but in an honest way to help each other succeed. It's, right. The Bible calls it sh iron sharpening iron. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's clear this up because th this is a, a a real misunderstanding, I believe. A lot of times, kids uh, come out of college. And uh, they want they want to build that thing. They've got this thing in their brain, and they want to build that thing. But their concept is, I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing it, and then I'm going to go play golf. Uh -huh. right. Let's clear that up because that's <laughs> just not the way it happens. Yeah, I no. mean, you work hard. Nothing comes easy. Yeah, there's a whole <clears throat> generation of people that want to take the elevator and avoid the stairs. Um, 
It's just impossible to do that. So that's definitely let, worth let, it. Let's say that again. Write that down, Terry. That was good. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember it. Yeah. There's a lot of people that want to take the elevator and avoid the stairs. Avoid the stairs. Now you think about that. Mm -hmm. that that's, a, that's, a, that's profound. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time because I like that. Your <laughs> dad's going to preach on that this yeah, Sunday. Go ahead. There's a lot of people that want to take the elevator and avoid the stairs. Yeah. And yet, the stairs will be the only thing that really gets them to the top. Yeah. 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 Character building, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's all like all those no's. I just go back to that because he's received them, I've received them, you've received them. Mm -hmm. All those no's are just build that character. And it's just that one step at a time. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. Yeah. yeah. If your dad was sitting here right now, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to start here. If your dad was sitting here right now, and I wish he was, I really enjoyed our interview with him. But if your dad was sitting here right now, what is a, a, the funniest uh, story he would tell on you growing up? Oh, no. Uh. I don't. <laughs> there's so many, I don't even know. Uh, this, this kid was. Wild child back then, running all over the place. I'm sure he's. I was always dirty. That's what I was always dirty. I was, I was always say, sweaty, it, dirty, say, thirsty. It, it's just <laughs> thirsty. Heat. It's just heat. I was. I would come in and, and there, I need a drink and I need it now. And I would throw a fit until I got it. But so I think stuff like that. Dad was my baseball coach um, in little league, and so I'm sure we've got stories about that too. And mm -hmm. yeah. What would your Zach, Zach, what would your dad say? What's a funny story he would say about you? I'm sure he's got plenty um, <laughs> that uh, that I don't recall, but um, I remember him always getting on to me about asking all the questions, asking all the questions. Stop asking questions. And my son does that to me now, yeah. to this day. Reaping. And when people ask me, like, how did you, how do you know how to? You're not a contractor. How do you know how to replace that floor or fix that hole in the wall? I asked a lot of questions, <laughs> you know, and I followed my dad and. It's not necessarily a funny story, but I'm, you know, who's laughing now? <laughs> he was a. Uh, I can see, I can see with my son too, just a million questions. But yeah, we had some good times, a lot of funny things. I remember, you know, fishing stories, falling in the water, and uh, gosh, losing pets, all the things that kids do. Um, you know, we. I remember my my sister thought she wanted to be a, a beautician, and she got a comb stuck in my dad's hair. <coughs> Basically, I had to take like emergency surgery to get that thing out because it was stuck well, so Back bad. when you had hair. Yeah, that's, that's where the start of the, the hair. loss, the hair loss. Yeah, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten, Heath? Um, I mean, you, you know, you, both of you guys are... are uh, that I'm approachable. There you go. Um, and, I, and I like that because I, I truly want to be approachable. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to help people with their problems or... Just be a friend, and um, you know I don't meet a stranger, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think that was that's probably the best. Yeah. How about you, Zach? Uh, maybe that I'm encouraging. Um, I get encouragement, and I gain confidence myself when I'm able to encourage others. To it's just kind of what fuels me is is trying to get everybody else around me to yeah be their best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and, and and I see that. I see that. You know, a lot of people can't do that. Honestly, a lot of people yeah. cannot do that. A lot of people can't get outside of their own personal uh, issues and insecurities to build other people up. But uh, but you do that very well. And so so do you, Heath. You, you 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 really you guys. It's easy for you guys to escape who you are real quick when you see a need in someone else to try to encourage and move them yeah. forward. Not everybody can can do that. What? Heath, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, continue doing what I love, and that's real estate and uh, business, and then also growing my family maybe a little bit more. Um, Did you hear that, Whitney? We're going for yeah. another kid. She's We're talking ready. me into it. That's, oh, yeah. she's, she yeah, she's uh, No, <laughs> easy, buddy. <laughs> I'm getting old already. Um, no, and still establish, you know, roots and... Um, we live in Corinth, but we, I've established roots here and have my whole life, but I like the being grounded and being close to family. All my family's here, and so I don't see us have an extreme five-year plan. Um, it's still doing our daily. You never had a desire back. to um, move away from this area? No. No. 
this yeah. home. Yeah, Texas is as close to heaven as you can get. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Zach, in five years, where are you going to be? I can't help but answer that question just by saying health, healthy. Just because without a mental health and physical health, uh, stability you're, you're just not able to do all the things that you want to do so I have goals and I have a picture of what five years ahead looks like um, but <clears throat> just staying healthy is my goal and yeah. that's where I that's what I see and we all hope for that don't we for yeah, sure uh, I mean uh, more yeah. than anything else in life you hope for good health it's uh, because, hard getting old <laughs> my dad my dad told me one time he said if I had known it was going to be this bad getting old I never would have done it <laughs> that's you right. know, for sure that's for right for sure yeah. where do you see old town a lot of people you know, people watch this show uh, I, I had a, a, a uh, an email from somebody in uh, um, Singapore a few weeks ago that had watched this on YouTube so a lot of people don't have a clue as to where we're at when you talk about Old Town Louisville. Well, Old Town Louisville is Old Town. It's Louisville, mm -hmm. Texas, and it's the old part of town that's being revitalized as a new city, as a new town. Where do you see Old Town in five years? Old Town to me is, is the people. It's not the, the buildings <clears throat> or the tradition. Uh, a lot of the, thing, the tangible things that we see it was built from the backbone of blue collar, you know, hardworking families, and it kind of poured into generations, and that's kind of what we're a part of. Um, so, with the growth and development of the area, my my one hope is that that connection remains. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a ton of new people that move here, and they're welcome. Um, but we got to keep that small community feel. Yeah. Or else, this old town is just a, another another intersection. Mm. Yeah, you know, old town is uh, just like you just said. Uh, it, it's it's a tight knit group, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's people that have been here a long time, yeah. a right. long time, and they of course they come into the restaurant frequently. But it's a tight knit uh, family, really, it is. and I, I and I agree with that. You don't you want to grow, you want to progress, you want to grow because it helps the city and 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 all that. But at the same time, you don't want to lose that family atmosphere. Right. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. do you see it's it important. here? I I agree with Zach, um, and I and I agree with you. We don't want to lose that what our city was built on and that was the hard backs of a lot of good people that uh you know had a dream yeah you know to to see where you know and now where it's at now mm -hmm. um we talked about the Polser family and mm -hmm. you know the different families that have come through the fox family and man you know if they could see it now yeah. you know um yeah and i would say would it make them proud you know mm -hmm. and that's kind of where i see louisville going yeah yeah Guys, thank you for uh, again. We, we, you know, I've I still got about 20 questions <laughs> I want to ask, I and mean, we'll do it again some other time. But I appreciate your time. I know both of you are extremely busy, and I appreciate your time coming on the show. And I you. wish you all the all the Godspeed and good luck in the world. Thank Terry. You so much.